We can sit around in the alternative media and we can moan about the fact that listings in Google are constantly being manipulated through algorithms, or we can do something about it. Hello, and tonight's headlines. The Iconic Media Group is a genuine alternative. I never fully switch off. It's almost like having the radio on in the background. <laughs> what is the reaction to that from within the industry? Well, I hide a lot. Hello, welcome to Real Education with Lana. However, we want to grow this into being one of the biggest independent platforms, if not the biggest independent platform in the world. I brought in Max Egan to talk about it. Mr. Egan, no need for introductions, but I've done it anyway. Say hello to Iconic. And welcome to the very first episode of Amanda's Secret Chamber. I felt it, I know what pain feels like. It's horrible to suffer mentally because everything's here. It's just done here. This gives the strong impression that we know what we're talking about. I want to make, I want to, I want to leave this world having made the biggest difference I can. A genuine alternative that will cast a light on subjects that the mainstream media, and to be fair, large swathes of the alternative media, either can't or won't. Now, um, here's, a, um, here's a story, changing the subject. Artificial wombs to make women obsolete. You can see a video about that on uh, davidike.com if you put in those words into the search engine artificial wombs to make women obsolete um, this is um, the movement to what I've been writing about for a long time now the no gender no procreation human um, uh, this is what the whole transgender thing's about in truth it's about that confusing gender at first and then fusing gender because they want to create a new human that is not even biological but is synthetic that's why you've got all this synthetic genealogy going on and um, of course the ability to produce um, sperm and uh, wombs outside of the human body is a big step along this road and both are possible it seems we're here with the the womb but it's certainly possible with with sperm because they they use stem cells cells that um, have no function until they're programmed to have a function and they program them with the function of sperm and they become sperm cells so this is this is where we're going now but in the end the idea is as described by Aldous Huxley in Brave New World published by the way in 1932 um, is to um, have uh, complete laboratory production of children, uh, what he called world um, hatcheries. And uh, this is um, why we're seeing the transgender thing, uh, the transgender explosion and all the nonsense and particularly the manipulation of the perceptions of gender of children is that they are degenderizing humanity step by step by step um, because they no longer need a man and a woman once procreation is done technologically um, and so they're they're moving towards this this no gender uh, human uh, which were, is all connected into this control of the human mind by artificial intelligence. Um, I'm uh, just writing another book now, um, which is just poured out. I hadn't started long ago, I nearly finished it. Um, and uh, I put that in this, what I'm talking about now, in massive context with with current events really opens them up to see what they're really um, what, what, what what's really happening and and, and as part of that um, whole smart grid synthetic human uh, plan uh, we of course have 5g and here's um, here's a headline the um, FCC is the Federal Communications Commission for those that are not in America this is the organization that's supposed to protect us from 
um, the telecom industry while it absolutely is just a front for the telecom industry. FCC provides $9 billion for telecoms for rural 5G rollout, despite 5G lawsuits, opposition and warnings. Well, of course, they're not bothered about opposition and warnings because it's the agenda. Uh, this, this smart grid they want, this global smart grid to which the human mind is connected, um, has to have at least uh, 5G uh, power to function as they want it to. And more, I mean, in China, they're talking about 6G now. And so it doesn't matter the effect on humans. In fact, you know, the effect on humans uh, suits them uh, for many and various reasons. Um, and because this smart grid is designed to connect the entirety of humanity to um, to artificial intelligence and the grid or the cloud, as they call it, um, then this cloud has to be everywhere. And uh, so they are um, subsidizing here to the tune of just 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 one figure, not the end of it, nine billion to um, to roll out 5G in rural areas because they want everybody. This is why people like Elon Musk, one of the biggest frauds on planet Earth, is um is putting uh, uh, through his uh, smart uh, his um SpaceX uh, um, company, he's um, sending up rockets um to um to pack the uh, um, space around the Earth with satellites beaming Wi-Fi and five G to cover every inch of the planet. Um, it's 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 so easy to read this stuff once you know what the outcomes plan to be. Um, some, something else um, here with um, very much related. Smartphone class action lawsuits consolidated. FCC accredited laboratory confirms models exceed radio frequency safety levels by up to 500%. Something else I've been writing about over the years. These safe levels are not safe at all. They, they say... Um, to the telecom companies, what's the level that you need to um, transmit on in terms of radiations and power and frequency? And uh, the telecoms say, well, this is the level we need. Um, and so what happens is the authorities then decide that that level, which the telecoms say, we, we must have this, that that is the safe level. Not because it's safe, because it's what the telecoms need to do what they want. And even then, it's exceeded without consequence. So here's the story. In August, the Chicago Tribune published a report that 11 smartphone models exceeded federal RF safety levels. Um, this led to Fagan Scott Law Firm starting a class action lawsuit against Apple and Samsung. Consumers, uh, I can't stand that word, consumers. I'm consciousness having an experience. I'm not a consumer. Um, I'm not here to consume as a um, reason for being. So therefore, I'm not a consumer. Consumers claim they are not adequately warned about radiation exposure risks from these devices. Well, of course, they're not. In fact, no safe level of cell phone radiation has still been scientifically determined for children or pregnant women. So children have much thinner skulls, so when they put the phones to their ear, their brains are getting far more radiation than a full-grown adult. But as I've written in the books, they, these safe levels are determined by something called Sam Phantom Head. This is a mock-up of the head of a big butch US soldier. Uh, and with a thick skull and uh, therefore the testing is irrelevant to the effect on kids that don't have thick skulls and they do this and they sleep at night and like a baby probably but then psychopaths would for many years now this story said um, health experts including the American Academy of Pediatrics 
I've also been warning that children are more susceptible to harm from exposure for reasons I've talked about. Regardless, phone manufacturers continue to make and market smartphones and other wireless devices to children and for, for children. Um, in San Francisco, December the 6th, 2019, national consumer rights law firm Fagan Scott consolidated its two proposed class action lawsuits against Apple and Samsung after independent testing from a Federal Communications Commission accredited laboratory confirmed that radio frequency uh, radiation levels from popular Apple and Samsung smartphones far exceeded federal limits when the devices are used as marketed by the manufacturers. Beth Fagan, managing partner of um, Fagan Scott, and the attorney representing the consolidated suit, which was filed after the firm hired the industry-recognized lab, uh, says that smartphone manufacturers must take responsibility for misleading consumers uh, about the level of RF radiation emitted by their smartphones when used against or in close proximity to the user's skin. Because the skin is actually an antenna. which is, This is well known. It's interacting with frequencies all the time. <coughs> And so it's going to interact with smartphone frequencies and 5G frequencies. This is why um, law enforcement and the military use, in America, they use technology to scatter and um, stop end protests and crowds. They fire out a frequency from these trucks they have that's within the band of 5G. And the scrowl, the, 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 the scrowls, the clouds, I'll, I'll get it right. The scrowls, the clouds. What are you trying to say, Dave? I'm trying to say the crowds, mate. Okay, we'll say it. Okay. The crowds scatter because um, they have the feeling their skin is on fire because their skin is interacting with the frequencies. Quote, Apple and Samsung smartphones have changed the way we live. Adults, teenagers and children wake up to check their email or play games and do work or school exercises on their smartphones. They carry these devices in their pockets throughout the day and literally fall asleep with them in their beds, Fagan said. And according to this report, the models they're talking about exceed radio frequency safety levels by up to 500 percent is there anyone out there i'm sure there are but there are many who are not is there anyone out there who is so naive that they believe that these people are producing this technology with those consequences for kids and adults come to that but particularly kids and they don't realize they're doing it Oh, we didn't realise it, it, it was a mistake. No, it wasn't. But then you realise the world is run by psychopaths and, oh, I understand it now. Um, here's uh, another story. Um, scientists, says the headline, shocked that gender-bending chemicals in our food are 44 times higher than thought well um maybe they were shocked but i'm not for the same reason that i'm not shocked that smartphones are putting out up to 500 percent higher emissions than they should um the chemicals in food that change and affect gender are part of this transgender elimination of gender. It's the same with the chemicals in food from pesticides and herbicides. That's why fish in very polluted rivers by this stuff change sex and in the same period that we've uh, we're having this these chemicals in our food and in uh, things like plastic bottles so-called bpa 
the same period that this has been inflicted on us systematically by the cult, we're having kids in schools being equally systematically confused about their gender. And the whole transgender thing has, has exploded. So is there anyone out there, this will be fewer this time, anyone out there who is so naive that they believe that vastly exceeding the even alleged safe emissions of smartphones and all this gender bending stuff in food and water bottles, etc., cetera, um, soda bottles, is another collective random chance accident? Of course not. Know the outcome and you'll see the journey. Something else um, which is all related to this is another part of this agenda is getting um, access to um, people's bodies, particularly children, through vaccines, pumping them full of crap. And um, of course, what you have is, is, is this process. They do something and they give an excuse for it. And then when someone challenges it with facts and informed debate, then those people have to be marginalized, abused, demonized and silenced. And you find this with climate change, you find it with all of it. Uh, uh, political correctness, all of it, and you find it with vaccines. And here's an extreme level of this, but I, I mean, how extreme can you get with, um, with these people? There are no limits to extreme. New calls emerge for anti-vaxxers to be thrown in re-education camps while their children are kidnapped and their homes seized. Um, if you disagree with the medical establishment's lies about vaccines, the story says, you have no right to exist in society at all, say pro-vaccine authoritarian tyrants, bracket C, climate change authoritarian tyrants, and political correctness authoritarian ty uh, tyrants, and transgender activist authoritarian tyrants, and so on and so forth. Um, all part of the same tyrant web. In case you were wondering what the real plans are for people who oppose the quack science dogma of the vaccine industry and its child murdering vaccine advocates, look no further than today's rant from anti-Trump neocon Rick Wilson. Anti-vaxxers are a scourge and a strong argument for re-education camps, the immediate seizure of their property and putting their children into protective custody, um, tweeted Rick Wilson, a neocon Republican strategist and so-called never Trumper. Of course, neocon is a um, is a term to describe an ultra Zionist controlled network um, that wants to bomb everything in sight, including currently Iran, and was behind the project the New American Century and all that stuff that I've written about in the books particularly in the trigger. Um, this demand, the story says, sums up the medical police state tyranny and anti-human authoritarianism, which characterizes vaccine advocates, almost all of whom are medical child molesters who maim children for profit. They quite literally seek to throw parents in concentration camps if they refuse to have their children injected with nearly 100 toxic um, vaccines that contain neurotoxic substances such as aluminium, squalene, mercury, and aborted human fetal tissue, formaldehyde, which they use to embalm dead bodies, and even complete DNA se sequences of aborted human babies whose genes were genetically engineered to cause cancer. Well, um, you can read that story at more length um, on davidite.com. The headline is uh, New Calls Emerge for Anti-Vaxxers to be Thrown in Re-Education Camps While Their Children Are Kidnapped and Their Homes Seized. Uh, but, you know, one of the, 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 the biggest um, points of resistance 
to seeing what's happening is people have no idea the scale of evil that we are dealing with and thus the scale of what evil will do.